I want to spend a moment explaining the, the term love for the sake of Allah. People abuse the term. You know, you look at a girl, for example, Allah, it's happening online a lot, where they say, wow, sister, I love you. And then you're like worried, how's the reaction going to be? So you quickly say, for the pleasure of Allah. <laughs> and you didn't say, for my own pleasure as well. You quickly add for the pleasure of Allah on the statement in order to halalize, if I can coin that term, in order to halalize the statement, you just added for the pleasure of Allah. Subhanallah. So I love you but for the pleasure of Allah, by the way, because you know, you're in niqab, I've got the beard, you know, that's what it suits, you know. May Allah forgive us. I tell you, the pleasure of Allah, what does it mean? When you see anyone doing anything for the sake of Allah, it sh should ignite in your heart a love for them because they are trying to please Allah. That's love for the sake of Allah. If I enter the masjid, I need to look for the most common factors between myself and everybody else. So as I walk in, I see someone reading salah and he's reading long salah in the corner. If I'm an evil person, I'm going to think, look at that uncle, he's a show off. This is Riya, it's Shirkun Akbar or Shirkun Asghar. And this means it's very bad. Uncle, stop reading long salah and going long into sajda because you're just showing off. That's a negative person. That's a person who's in the clutches of the devil and shaitan. But a true mu'min, you see someone reading salah and you, you greet them with such importance because to you, they are a VIP of Allah. They are trying their best to earn the pleasure of Allah. You see a sister in an age where it is so difficult to even cover the hair and she's covered it properly and she's wearing hijab and you know that she faces challenging comments from society and community and you just for the pleasure of Allah, there is a love in your heart. You say, may Allah make it easy. A dua comes from the heart for those whom you may never communicate with just by seeing them while you're driving and you see, mashallah, look at this family. Subhanallah, all my brothers and sisters, they are Muslimin, Muslimat, mashallah. Ya Allah, protect them. Ya Allah, make it easy for them. Ya Allah, sustain them. Ya Allah, give them Jannatul Firdaus. And they don't even know you said that. That is love for the sake of Allah. That is love for the sake of Allah. When you walk into the masjid and you start hating the people who are reading salah just because they raise their hands a little bit more or they don't, that is the clutch of the devil that has actually gotten hold of you. But you need to enter the masjid and ensure that all those who are here, Ya Allah, we share in common a shahada. All of us bear witness that you alone are worshipped. All of us bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu is afdalul khalqi wa akramul rusuli khatamul anbiya'i wal mursaleen sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Therefore, we love each other for the sake of Allah. In this way, you are true. You are genuine. Today, it's become material. When you gain something from someone, either to quench your lusts and desires or something material to be able to get from them so that you can live a more luxurious life. That's when you start saying the I love you's. But the true I love you is when you're not gaining anything from a person. It's a feeling within the heart of genuineness towards the poorest person who might even be begging on the streets. And I'm not encouraging begging, but I'm just giving you an example that even the poorest of the poor, the darkest of the dark, and you love them for the sake of Allah. You give them importance to say, you know what? This person is trying to earn the pleasure of Allah. Today, a face looks pretty. And the first thing that comes to your tongue is, I love you. You don't love me. No, you don't. You know why? True love has nothing to do with what you look like, my brothers and sisters. True love... Even if someone is out of shape, according to us, and even if they are, for example, not that grand looking that the whole world turns around to give them a second and a third look, we still love them because of their dedication, their sacrifice. This is why I call on every one of us. You know, when you get married, mashallah, you're excited because there's a honeymoon and so on. And everyone's married and everyone's, subhanallah, so happy, it's new, you know. As you grow older and you have children and you have the middle age spread, mashallah, and the love handles become love pouches and so on. Do you know what happens? If you can still feel the love due to the dedication to one another and to your resultant children, then you are a true human being. Then you are a true mu'min. 
you feel the love. This is my spouse. I love my spouse. Look at what sacrifice she has gone through or he has gone through. Going out in the morning, coming back just to serve us, smiling at us. And yet there are so many other, in inverted commas, prettier people. But we are dedicated. Yes, we love everyone as human beings. We love the Muslimin with a special form of love. But there is a different type of love between spouses and family members, your parents and your children. That love is from Allah. Allah connected you in some way. Remember, if you do not learn to love correctly, then you will shatter your heart in that which you think is love, but it's not love. So what happens? You've been married for so many years and suddenly you take a look at something pretty and your entire life is destroyed because you didn't know how to dedicate that love in the right channel. You didn't know what true love was. I've known and I'm sure we all know of so many examples of people who shattered their lives and the lives of their children simply because they didn't know how to appreciate what Allah placed in their lives. How long are you going to live for? How long am I going to live for? I don't even know if I'm going to see tonight. But what I do know is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The way he has taught me to love, I need to be dedicated in it and true in that love. You love your mother, don't you? Yes, I do. Would it make a difference if she looked this way or that way or fat or not fat or dark or not dark or tall or short? Would it make a difference? No. Why? Because that's my mother. Well, the same should apply to the mother of your children. Subhanallah. I'm not saying waste yourself and justify it by saying Mufti Meng said so. No. Take care of yourself. But remember, to make people feel appreciated is a great act of worship that only a few have mastered. Remember that. To make people feel appreciated is one of the biggest gifts you can give each other in your social circles and relationships. Starting with your family members. Many of us, our own children, they get hooked on to bad habits because we've never shown love and affection and appreciation to them. Today, we have to repeat the words, I love you, I love you, I hope we mean them, but we have to repeat them with a rosary sometimes to make sure that they've, it's been uttered enough times for them to be reassured. I love you. Look at them again, I love you. You know I love you, don't you? Do you love me back? Wow. These are the type of statements people utter these days. And they need to be uttered because people are weak. The hearts have become weak. Remember, ultimately we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ultimately, it is the love of Allah that will save us from the calamities of the dunya and the akhirah. So when you fulfill your salah, it should stem from love, not from just fulfilling something. Look, I give you another example. If I come here for salah, like this evening, salah to taraweeh, I have a problem, okay? I have a problem. What is the problem? One hand, I have the, the people who are musallis, who are here, subhanallah. And I wouldn't like to delay because I know everyone has their, you know, timing and everyone has responsibilities and everyone has so many things to do and so on. But on the other hand, I have something important. I know of a hadith where the Prophet ﷺ says, on the day of judgment, the people of the Quran will be asked to read in the same way they used to read in the dunya, in the world. So if I'm going to rush through my taraweeh, there's a problem because in front of Allah, I'm only going to be able to read the way I read when I was given an opportunity on earth. So do I rush? To please the people or do I read eloquently to please Allah so that when I'm on the day of judgment in front of Allah I'm not embarrassed to say I can't read in any other way the hadith says keep on going up and only recite the way you used to recite on earth wow I'm stuck so this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us to create a balance you read in a in a pace that is beautiful of late, I've been watching a lot of clips of Taraweeh online. And one thing that has amazed me is the pace has slowed down throughout the globe. Because people have now realized, you know what? We gather everything, but we don't get the reward in the month of Ramadan enough for us to actually earn the pleasure of Allah. We're on edge. When you love Allah, you don't care what time it takes. Just like your Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, very low example, but that of your girlfriend. You don't care what time of the day it is. You don't care how long she talks to you for. Because why? That's my chick. Come on. 
the cherry of the cake, subhanallah. Astaghfirullah. May Allah forgive us. Astaghfirullah. Something haram and unacceptable, we're ready to spend the whole night with. Subhanallah. And something, so I can't even say something, astaghfirullah, but the deity who made you, you're not prepared to spend another 20 minutes with. Subhanallah. And I've marked the masajid across the globe, not just here, where the slower they are, the less musallis they are. Subhanallah. I think maybe we sift through those who are deserving and those who are not. It's your opportunity. This year we're going to make it with a difference, inshallah.